guys welcome back to my channel my name is Wendy if you are new here I am a registered nurse I'm also currently a family nurse practitioner student and on this channel I share my nursing advice my nursing journey as well as bits and pieces of my life so I am doing an online NP program and I wanted to give you guys my advice in regards to which questions and what you should know before choosing an online NP program, especially what questions you should be asking the school recruiters so that you are more informed and you have more of an idea of what this program is going to look like. Um, I have it all written down on my phone, so I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys as much information as possible. I actually get a lot of people asking me this and recently my friend was asking me, well, what should I be asking the school? And I was like listing all these things to her and I was like, I should just make a video because a lot of people ask me too on Instagram, which I do want to mention that if you ask me in the comments what school I go to, I will not share that the information for privacy reasons. So I do hope that you understand that. But I will not share what school I am going to and what school I am doing my NP program with. Maybe in the future, but not right now. That's not something I'm going to mention. So first things first, you need to make sure that the school that you are choosing is accredited within your state. For example, the online program that I am doing is through another state. So I had to go into my California BRN website and make sure that that school was listed as a part of the schools that were accredited because the school might say like on their website that they are accredited. But if you don't look on the website and you don't see that school there, then that's a big red flag. So first things first, you want to make sure that they are accredited within your state because if not, that's going to be a whole waste of time and your education it will not count. So that's the first thing you need to do. Second thing is you need to find out how many classes and credits are needed to complete the program. Sometimes what happens is that they tell you you need to complete an X amount of classes and credits. But in reality, if it's another school in another state, then they might have extra prerequisites for that state. So that means that you'll have to end up taking the classes necessary to complete the program in that state which is crazy. It's kind of like when I did my BSN program, I did it through another state and they wanted me to make sure that I had like three political science classes and I only had taken like one. So I had to take two extra just to complete that program. So it was, it's extra money pretty much what I'm trying to tell you guys. Make sure you of course have to submit your transcripts to the school and then they'll give you more of an idea of what classes that you need to take in addition to the classes that are already required for you to complete your program. So third thing is find out if there's a clinical and technical fee because that's on top of the tuition. So on top of your tuition, you also might need to pay a clinical and technical fee. My school doesn't, but I know there are other schools that do. So make sure that you also ask about that information because that's extra money that you have to put out there. So also find out how much money per credit. So that means that sounds a little weird, but find out how much the credit cost. Like if it's $600 per unit, that's going to be what 600 times a three unit class, $1,200 per class. If it's a three unit class, so make sure you find that information because that way you can also compare with other schools how much the program will cost, if it's cheaper, if it's more expensive. So make sure that you look into that as well. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure you look into is how many classes at a time will you be taking? So my school, I only take one class at a time, which honestly was the best thing that I ever did for myself because I was still working full time the whole time up to like a few weeks ago. So it may be hard for you to work full time and do more than one class at a time. So I highly advise that you ask that information or maybe you want to move at a faster rate and you're not working. Maybe you could take two or three classes at a time. Make sure you ask that information as well because that's a lot to consider. If you have a family, if you're going to 
work full time and if you're going to be doing school that might be a little too much if you're doing more than a class um i know my friend does two classes at a time at walden and she says it is bearable but it's it's hard because she has a family she has kids and all that and she's working full time so it's hard so make sure you look into that also the other thing is that you need to find out if you need to travel to the campus for any immersion class or for any clinical checkoff i do not have to do that which now looking back i'm like man i wish i would have chosen a school in which i could have at least went to go check off my clinical skills but that's not what i did and that's something that you also need to consider because if you need to travel to campus, that means that you're going to need to take time off of work or you, if you're not working, then you need to somehow come up with that money to stay in that city where your school is at, pay for food, pay for your lodging and all that during that time that you're going to be there. So you need to look into that as well. The other thing that I advise you to find out is whether the clinicals are at the end of your program or if it's in the beginning of the program. There are different programs that they're all structured differently and some clinicals are in the beginning of the program and you do them throughout your classes as well. So that might be a little hard if you're working full time and you don't have enough like vacation time and all that. So it's important for you to plan that out Figure that out first because it's it's going to affect your work and school life if you don't have any like vacation time and stuff like that. So find out when your clinicals are scheduled within your program so that you have more of an idea and you could plan out your life and your work life better um, for the future when the clinicals do come around. The other thing is that you really, really highly encourage you to find out is if the school helps you find preceptors. Now, I've heard from other people that even though the school might say that they will help you find preceptors, that doesn't mean that they're going to find you a preceptor within your city. It could be like in a whole like two, three hours away. But I mean... Honestly, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have just found a school that would help me find a preceptor. But you guys know, like I had to cold call a bunch of offices to find clinical preceptors and it sucked. It was so stressful. But if you can find a school that will help you with that, then go for it because it saves you so much time and so much stress. It's hard. It's really hard. And I have a whole playlist on how it is that I found my clinical preceptors. I'll link it up here. So if you guys are interested. But also, you want to ask if your tests and quizzes are proctored. Mine are, so I have to do it on a video. Oh, I have my webcam put away. But I was going to show you guys the webcam. But I log on to a lockdown browser and I take my quizzes and exams through video so they're watching me not at that time because it records it and then they grade it afterwards so find out about that because like i said sometimes they will charge you if they use like third-party websites when i did my bsn program i don't remember what that website was called but i had to pay each time that i did a proctored exam i had to pay a fee now this time in my master's program i don't have to do that but find that out because that's extra money. Also, my last tip for you is to make sure that you are researching many different schools so that you are able to make a decision off of all the information and research that you have acquired from all the different schools. Make sure that you're Googling schools. Make sure that you're asking your coworkers or other NP students, other nurse practitioners who are already working, what school did they go to? Where did they get their education and look into those schools and make sure that you gather as much information as you can from each school and then you compare each one and that you write down your pros and cons as to why this school would work for you and why the other school wouldn't work for you because at the end you got to make the right decision for you 
And sometimes the right decision for you doesn't mean that it's going to be the right decision for the other person who did the NP program or for your coworker or for your friend. It just all depends on what works for you, your schedule, your family life, your work life. Also, if you guys think I missed anything or you guys have any advice to other students who are also trying to find an NP school, make sure to comment down below so that we can all help each other. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.